uh, we gave you know this future life award we gave it the first time to this guy vasily arkipov you know he was on most people haven't even heard of him. yeah can you say who he is vasily arkipov he uh, has in, in my opinion made the greatest positive contribution to humanity of any human in, in modern history mm -hmm. and maybe it sounds like hyperbole here like i'm just over the top but let me tell you the story and i think maybe you'll agree so during the cuban missile crisis we americans first didn't know that the russians had sent four submarines but we caught two of them and we didn't know that, that, that so we dropped practice depth charges on the one that he was on to try to force it to the surface but we didn't know that this nuclear submarine actually was a nuclear submarine with a nuclear torpedo. We also didn't know that they had authorization to launch it without clearance from Moscow. And we also didn't know that they were running out of electricity. Their batteries were almost dead. They were running out of oxygen. Sailors were fainting left and right. The temperature was about 110, 120 Fahrenheit on board. It was really hellish conditions, really just a kind of doomsday. Mm -hmm. And at that point, these giant explosions start happening from the Americans dropping these. The captain thought World War III had begun. They decided they were, they were going to launch the nuclear torpedo. And one of them shouted, you know, we're all going to die, but we're not going to disgrace our Navy. You know, we don't know what would have happened if there had been a giant mushroom cloud all of a sudden, you know, and against the Americans. But since everybody had their hands on the triggers, it's pretty, uh, you don't have to be too creative to think that it could have led to an all-out nuclear war. And, in which case we wouldn't be having this conversation now, right? Yeah. What actually took place was they needed three people to, 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 to approve this. The captain had said yes. There was the Communist Party political officer. He also said, yes, let's do it. And the third man was this guy, Vasily Arkhipov, who said, yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, he, for some reason, he was just more chill than the others, and he was the right man at the right time. I don't want us, to, as a species, rely on the right person being there at the right time you know, uh, we tracked down his family li living in relative poverty outside Moscow. We, we flew his daughter. He had passed away to, and, and flew them to London. They had never been to the West even. It was incredibly moving to get to honor them for this. Uh, the next year we gave the, this Future Life Award to Stanislav Petrov. Have you heard of him? Yes. So he, he was in charge of the Soviet early warning uh, station, which was built with Soviet technology and honestly not that reliable. It said that there were five US missiles coming in. Again, if they had launched at that point, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah. He decided based on just mainly gut instinct to just not tell, not re to not escalate this. And, and uh, I'm very glad he wasn't replaced by an AI that was just <laughs> automatically following orders. And then we gave the third one to Matthew Messelson. Last year, we gave this award to um, to these guys who actually use technology for good, not to avoiding something bad, but for something good. The guys who uh, eliminated this disease, which is way worse than COVID, but that had killed a half a billion people in in the past, its final century. Smallpox, right? So we mentioned it earlier. COVID, on average, kills less than one percent of people who get it. Smallpox, about thirty percent, and um, they just ultimately. Viktor Zhdanov and Bill Fagey. Most of my colleagues have never heard of either of them. Um, one American, one Russian. They did this amazing effort. Not only were, was Zhdanov able to get the US and the Soviet Union to team up against smallpox during the Cold War, but Bill Fagey came up with this ingenious strategy for making it actually go all the way to defeat the disease with, without funding for vaccinating everyone. And as a result, we haven't had any, we went from 15 million deaths the year I was born in smallpox. So what do we have in COVID now? A little bit short of 2 million, right? Yes. To zero deaths, of course, this year and forever. There have been 200 million people, they estimate, who would have died since then by smallpox had it not been for this. So isn't science awesome <laughs> yeah, that... <laughs> when you use it for good? And I, I, the yeah. reason we want to celebrate these sort of people is, is to remind them of this. Science is so awesome when you use it for good. And those uh, those awards actually uh, th the variety there paints a very interesting picture. So the 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 first two are looking at it's kind of exciting to think that these these average humans in some sense that they're products of you know billions of 
other humans that came before yeah. them, evolution. And some little, you, you said gut, you know, but there's something in there that that uh, stopped the annihilation of the human race. <laughs> and that's a magical thing, but that's like this deeply human thing. And then there's the other aspect where that's also very human, which is to build solution to the, to the existential crises that we're facing, like to, to build it, to take the responsibility and to take, you know, come up with different yeah. technologies and so on. Yeah. And both of those are deeply human. The gut and, and the mind, whatever that yeah. is. Yeah, like, and the best is when they work together. Arkhipov, I wish I could have met him, of course, but he had passed away. He was really a fantastic military officer, combining all, all the best traits that we in America admire in our military. Because first of all, he was very loyal, of course. He never even told anyone about this during his whole life, yeah. even though you think he had some bragging rights, right? Yes. But he just was like, this is just business, just doing my job. It only came out later after his death. And, and second, the reason he did the right thing was not because he was some sort of liberal or some sort of, not because he was uh, just, oh, you know, uh, peace and love. It was partly because he had been the captain on another submarine that had a nuclear reactor meltdown. Mm -hmm. And it was his heroism that helped contain this. That's why he died of cancer later also. But he would seen many of his crew members die. And I think for him, that gave him this gut feeling that, you know, if there's a nuclear war between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, the whole world is going to go through what I saw my dear crew members suffer through. It wasn't just an abstract thing for him. I think yeah. it was real. And second, though, not just the gut, the mind, right? He he was, for some reason, just a very level-headed personality and a very smart guy, which is exactly what we want our best fighter pilots to be also, right? I, I, I never forget Neil Armstrong when he's landing on the moon and almost running out of gas. Mm -hmm. And he, he doesn't even change, when they say 30 seconds, he doesn't even change the tone of voice, just yeah. keeps going. Arkhipov, I think, was just like that. So when the explosions start going off and his captain is screaming and we should nuke them and, and all, he's like, I don't think the Americans are trying to sink us. I think they're trying to send us a message. That's pretty badass yes. <laughs> coolness. Because he said, yeah. if they wanted to sink us, no. and he said, L -l listen, listen, it's alternating. One loud explosion on the left, one on the right. One on the left, one on the right. He was the only one who noticed this pattern. And he, he's like, I think this is a, them trying to send us a signal that they want us to surface and they're not going to sink us. Uh, and somehow... This is how he then managed to ultimately, with his com combination of gut you know, and also just cool analytical thinking, was able to de-escalate the whole thing. And uh, yeah, so this is the, <laughs> some of the best in humanity. I guess coming back to what we talked about earlier, it's the combination of the neural network, the instinctive, you know, <laughs> with, with uh, yeah. I'm getting I'm tearing up here, getting yeah. emotional, but he, he was just, he is one of my superheroes, yeah. having both <laughs> the gut the heart, you know, and the mind combined. And especially in that time, uh, there's something about the, I mean, this is a very, in America, people are used to this kind of idea of being the individual, um, of like on your own thinking. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, under, in the Soviet Union, under communism, it's, it's actually much harder to do that. Oh yeah, he it's, didn't even, he even got, he didn't get any accolades either when he came back for this, right? right? Uh, they just wanted to hush the whole thing up. Yeah, there's echoes of that with Chernobyl. There's all kinds of um, uh, that. That's one. That's that's a really hopeful thing that amidst big centralized powers, whether it's companies yeah. or states, there's still the power of the individual to think on their own to act. But I think we need to think of people like this not as a panacea we can always right. count on, but rather as a wake up call. You know. Yes. So because of them, because of Arkhipov, we are alive to learn from this lesson, to learn from the fact that we shouldn't keep playing Russian roulette and almost have a nuclear war by mistake now and then, because relying on luck is not a good long-term strategy. If you keep playing Russian roulette over and over again, the probability of surviving just drops exponentially with time. Yeah. And if you have some probability of having an accidental nuke war every year, the probability of not having one also drops exponentially. I think we can do better than that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think 
uh, the message is very clear. There are, once in a while, shit happens. And um, there is a lot of very concrete things we can do to uh, reduce the risk of things like that happening in the first place.